Maryland quarterback battle might have just taken a plot twist. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And these days, new potential hires can feel like high stakes wagers for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. The Maryland quarterback battle might have just taken a huge turn. So Maryland had its practice, had an open practice to the public at Morgan State. Morgan State is a college in Baltimore, and they did a kind of combined project to showcase football in the Baltimore area. And there was kind of a community side of things that Maryland wanted to do and the Morgan State head coach wanted to do. So Coach Loxley connected with the Morgan State coach, and they have a good connection of over 20 years or something like that. And it sounds like they're pretty good friends. So this was more about, I just want to make sure you guys realize that this practice was more about just football and putting pads on. And it was more of like a community type of thing to bring people in the Baltimore area, showcase football a little bit for maybe kids that don't normally get to see uh, quite a team at such a high level, like the Maryland football team. And some kids were supposed to stay after the game or some of the, um, some of the Maryland players or some of the Morgan state players were supposed to stay after the game to talk to the players. So it was like a community type of thing and a really cool event that Maryland and Morgan state put on at Morgan state. So Maryland traveled up there to have a combined practice with Morgan state, which is pretty cool. I think that the combined practice at this point in the year obviously morgan state's probably not amazing or anything like that but it's still good to see another jersey and to just practice along with another team and it's even more important to do it for like for community a community service type of thing i kind of i love i honestly love that they did that and they were able to put that together and they were able to plan that And it was open practice, so anyone could watch, really. And so there's been a ton of reports that have came out talking about what happened at the Maryland football practice. And I'm going to tell you, the quarterback battle might be a lot different than what we actually thought. It might not be, but based on some of the stuff that people were saying and everything going on, the quarterback battle might have taken a twist that maybe we didn't quite expect. So the news of the day, the quarterback battle, all offseason, that's really what anyone's going to talk about. Whenever there's a quarterback battle, that's all anyone wants to talk about. And, I mean, that's a lot of what I'm going to talk about as well as we continue to transition and see what's going on with this quarterback battle between a three-way dog type of race with MJ Morris, Cam Edge, Cameron Edge, and also Billy Edwards in It just looks like it's in a pretty confusing spot, and I don't think it's going how a lot of you guys may have expected it to go. So basically, the stuff I read about it, I wasn't at the practice, but the stuff that I read about it and the reports that were going on, um, good sources like 247 and all those type of um, sources inside Maryland Sports, it looks like Edwards and Edge took – all the first team reps while MJ Morris took the third team reps. So Edwards and Edge split the first team reps. It sounds like pretty evenly. It sounds like Cam Edge might have gotten a rep or two more, but it sounds like it was a pretty even split between Billy Edwards and Cam Edge for the quarterback battle for the number one spot in on the quarterback battle, which is not, I don't think, how we expected it to go at all. We thought... All right, it's way early on, but but even this early, I would have thought that MJ Morris gets sprinkled in with the first team, and maybe it's a type of thing where he has to earn it, and he has to figure it out, and they're not just going to give it to him right away. They're not just going to give him first team reps right away. Maybe he hasn't looked particularly good in practice, but this is kind of a big deal because it's like, 
I guess the spring has just started, so you got to give MJ Morris time to transition. But it's clear that right now, Edwards and Edge, I don't know how much stock you put into this, but they are leading the quarterback battle right now. So it looks like they are on top in terms of QB1 and QB2, and it looks like MJ Morris is QB3 right now. I don't know exactly what the depth chart is, but that's kind of what it looks like in terms of the reps. And honestly, the reps don't lie. Who's ever taken the first team snaps? It's usually who your guy is. That's usually who your quarterback is. So it looks like that's kind of how it has gone for Maryland football in this practice at Morgan State. But people were saying that pretty much everyone was inconsistent. Edwards, Edge were inconsistent with the first team. They made some good plays. There were some plays that they probably wanted back. It sounds like Billy Edwards had one of the best balls of the game to um, Dylan Wade, the talented tight end, who we're going to talk about another day. He sounds like he might be a really good player for us. He sounds like he's doing a lot of different things that's going to put him in a spot to be definitely a contributor in our offense next year. Just a sophomore tight end, which we really need in that tight end room, someone to break out. We know we have Preston Howard, but we need someone else to break out. But we're going to talk about Dylan Wade and how talented he's been. But it sounds like Billy Edward delivered the best ball of the game to Dylan Wade, which is, it's interesting. It's, it's, it sounded like it was a seam pass to Dylan Wade. So Billy Edwards might've had the play of the day, but I'm looking for more consistency and not just flash plays. And it sounds like MJ Moore struggled a little bit. Sounds like he was overthrowing guys, didn't put it in good spots, didn't have the accuracy that he would have probably wanted to have. But I do want to emphasize that this is early. This is way early for the quarterback competition. And it's really like MJ Morris is so behind Edwards and Edge, who have been in the program for two years now. And it's like you can't expect MJ Morris to come in and already be better than those guys in terms of being uh, being in the system and knowing the plays and being able to distinguish what to do against this defense, what to do against that defense. And I'm not saying that a, that a quick 11 on 11 segment at Morgan State is going to continue to like tell you exactly what what is going to be like a crazy look that you might see against some of the better teams you might see against Penn State or you might see against Oregon. Like I'm pretty sure it's pretty basic, shallow day one, day two type of stuff. Just normal man, cover two, cover three, nothing too complicated. But still, it takes time to learn. If the defense does this, what do I have to do? If if they slide there, if they if the corner plays there, if the safety plays up there, if the safety drops back, if the corner plays the flat, like there are so many different things that they have to learn. And Billy Edwards and Kim Edge have been in the system, so like they should know it pretty much. They should have a pretty good idea of what they're doing um, out there for the quarterback battle. Well, it's going to take MJ Moore sometimes. But it is still interesting that MJ Morse isn't getting any first team reps. And so during the offseason, especially next big thing that we're going to be able to watch really closely and watch the full game and really understand where players are at is the spring game. The spring game will be an interesting tell. Will be an interesting to tell to see what quarterback is doing what type of things because maybe the guy that they leave on their own in terms of what I mean during the spring game is whoever there's going there's three quarterbacks in this quarterback competition. There's going to be two teams in the spring game, and so one team's going to have one quarterback and the other team's going to have two quarterbacks. Maybe the person that is standing alone on their team might be the tell to see who's really the leader in the quarterback battle when we come back around. But right now, it's clearly it might be Cameron Edge by a little bit. And you guys don't forget, I said I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be mad at all if Cameron Edge is starting. I talked to him. The amount of work that he puts in after practice, apparently he's throwing every day after practice to Jayshon Jones. He said Jayshon Jones was a huge friend of his, and I interviewed him for Inside Maryland Sports. He's a great kid. He works really hard, but I think he's a really talented thrower of the ball. We saw him throw maybe the best deep ball of the, of the year in that uh, Music City Bowl game against Auburn. He had one of the nicest throws I've seen in college basketball. 
or college football this year. We've been watching a lot of college basketball with March Madness and the national championship tonight, but that's another conversation for, well, not another day because the game is tonight, but that's for another time. But he threw some of the nicest balls I have seen this year, and it just seems like he's a natural thrower of the ball. Obviously, he didn't play him much this year at all besides the Music City Bowl game, but he's a really just – good processor it seems like and if he wins the quarterback i wouldn't be surprised it sounds like he might have a slight edge i'm not saying he does but it looks like billy edwards is right there too there's concerns with billy edwards starting can he deliver the ball to the receivers the strength of our team as much as he needs to can he do those type of things there are definitely question marks with billy edwards but it sounds like mj morris hasn't gotten the offense down yet and so the spring game, you can't really hide because we're all going to be watching. I think it's on the Big Ten Network so we can all just watch it and see what's really going on and really have a visual and understanding of what's going on. And you can't really hide. If you struggle in the spring game, then it's like a lot of the fans are going to look at you and say, this is all that we have, even if you've been playing well, whether it's Edge, Billy Edwards, or um, Billy Edwards, Edge, or Morse, MJ Morse. So it'll be interesting to see how this continues to go. But right now, this could be taking a plot twist, and it might not be so MJ Morse is going to be the starter by the beginning of the year. This really might be a marathon of a quarterback battle, like Coach Loxley says, and I'm going to say it is. It's going to be a marathon. We might not know the starter until maybe even after the first game or so in this Maryland football season. Hopefully he names it before that. But this quarterback battle has definitely taken a twist, a plot twist, and I expect more to come for this quarterback battle. One thing that isn't going to take a huge twist, I think Maryland has their starting safeties down. I will talk to you about that after this ad from LinkedIn. These days, new potential hires can feel like high stakes wagers for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. A lot of people need jobs right now. And if you want to find someone amazing for your company, LinkedIn Jobs helps find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So Maryland safety duo, I think, has a chance to be one of the better duos in the Big Ten. I think last year we had one of the better safety duos in the Big Ten. But it looks like the starting duo after the reports of practice at Morgan State, there's plenty to talk about. I'm going to continue to talk about it the next couple of days. Um, It's another reason why I love that they have this practice. It gives me a lot to talk about. But it looks like Glendon Miller and Dante Trader are supposed to be the starting safeties this year. It looks like that's how it went, and that's how the reports from practice is that Dante Trader and Glendon Miller will start for Maryland at safety. And apparently they look like the two best defenders on the field, which checks out, to be honest. There are two guys that are returning in the secondary, and I expect them to be two of our best players on the defense side of the ball because I think they're both really talented. I think they're both rangy. Glendon Miller's got length that you can't teach at 6'3", 6'4". And my thing was, I wasn't sure that Glendon Miller was going to start at safety for Maryland football because I thought maybe he would be starting at slot cornerback again because he played really well last season at that star, that slot kind of spot. He was able to use his length. He had a really good season overall. He had four interceptions, five pass deflections, put up some solid numbers, Flew around a lot of the games. He looked like a really good player out there. And I thought, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep Glendon Miller in the slot. He looked comfortable there. He looked like he was good in there. And I understand that he's been more of a safety in his career. But I still thought maybe he could start at slot corner and we look to fill the safety spot with somebody else. But it looks like he is going to be a starting safety alongside Dante Trader, which I love. I think they're going to be really good combo. I think Dante has the speed and athleticism and the range. And then Glennon Miller has got height that you can't teach that. If he gets his hands on the ball, he's going to intercept it. And he's going to be able to make it a lot harder because he also has range with his length that he has. 
and I'm excited to see what they can do as a duo. And I do think it's one of the better duos in the Big Ten. I'm not going to say it's the best. I know Ohio State has Caleb Downs, and he's he's a he's a dude for sure. That's a dude for Al or not was at Alabama, but left to Ohio State. He's probably the best safety in the country. Maybe you could argue a couple other guys, but what he did as a freshman is pretty cool. And for Ohio State to get him, it's kind of annoying for Maryland fans. I'm not. I'm not going to say like it's super annoying because we don't play them this year, but we're going to have to probably play him next year. And he's probably going to be like a top 10 pick in next year's draft. Potentially. I don't know exactly. Safety positions weird, but some other teams have some really good safeties, but he's definitely one that sticks out. But I do think that Maryland's duo and I do think Dante Trader is a really good player. And I think Dante people forget he probably could potentially be maybe our best player. He looks like he's taken on that leadership role at Maryland football. I see a lot of clips of him leading. We know he does a great job in the community with the One Speed podcast with Bo Braid and Ruben Hippolyte. Obviously, Bo Braid is gone to the NFL now, and it'll be interesting to see if they continue that podcast, if they continue to do that. I hope they do, honestly. That would be really cool to see. I mean, think about what Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey do. They've been on two different teams these last couple of years, but they've still done the podcast. You just got to do it a little bit differently. You can't do it in person with everybody. It would be more of an online thing, but I'm sure they can figure that out. But with losing Bo Braid, it looks like Glendon Miller will step right in and start, which I like for Maryland football. And I think it'll be I think it'll be successful in the Big Ten. And now it's really about the 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 corners. It's like you got to replace everybody now in the cornerback room and. We'll talk about that a little bit on tomorrow, but when we're looking at the fact that Glendon Miller's playing safety, you got to replace everybody. You got to replace the slot. You got to replace the outside, both the outside corners. I know we brought in some guys, but I'm be lying if I said I wasn't concerned. So now the secondary is like I have complete confidence in the safety duo overall. But to be completely honest, I rather have complete confidence in my corner room. And maybe the safety room is lacking some type of experience or maybe talent than have it the way that we have it where I'm really confident in the safety room, but the cornerbacks kind of is like it's not experience at all. There's definitely talented players in there and players that can play. And it just it's like some of the players that you play in the Big Ten at the receiver position, Oregon's got um, that Stewart kid from Texas A&M transferred. Ohio State has the number one wide receiver in the class of 2024 and then they also have a mecca and buka is going to be a really good player of course he's been a good player for the last couple of years he and he decided to come back and do one more year at ohio state and it's like how do we match up but i'm confident that the safety duos they're going to stay in the right spots they're going to do the right things for Maryland football and i like the fact that glennon miller is starting at safety alongside dante trader i do think they both have some type of NFL upside. I don't think it'll be easy, but I do think Dante Trader's an NFL player. I don't know exactly where he gets drafted, but I do think they make one of the better safety duos in the Big Ten. Roman Hemby should step up this year, and I want more carries for Roman Hemby individually. I will tell you about that actually right now. Roman Hemby, Roman Hemby, it's interesting. I need him to have a better year, and I want more carries for Roman Hemby. Sounds like I saw, sounds like, uh, it sounds like how I talked all last year where I was like, Roman Hemby needs the ball more. Give the ball more to Roman Hemby. Can it Roman Hemby more? I, I said that consistently last year, and I really believe that. I thought we depended on Talia way too much and I didn't really like it because I thought it got us in weird positions at times I thought it made it a lot harder on our team at times and I thought that was a big reason for the interceptions because Talia felt like he needed to make plays at times and it was like dang like we have this really talented back here who isn't getting enough carries and I know Maryland likes to play a lot of different guys and this was one of my things that that really made me like annoyed me at times to be honest with the Maryland football team is how much we rotated players at the end of the day rotation across the defensive line makes sense but everywhere else almost 
I mean, sure, you want to rotate your running backs a little bit. And you might give some different receivers a little bit of looks. But it's like I want to see – I want our best players to play. And Roman Hemby was our best running back, and he's been our best running back. And he had a down year after his explosive red shirt freshman year. And it's like he had a down sophomore year. And it's like I think we held him back. Of course, the averages weren't there and the yards weren't there. But it's like we keep giving the ball to Antoine Littleton. And Antoine Littleton's a good player, but we don't need to use Antoine Littleton on first and tens or entire drives. Use Antoine Littleton in the goal line like you with Billy Edwards, and that's going to be a really hard combine combination to stop or use Antoine Littleton and other in uh, just short yardage you don't have to use him on first and 10 and those different things it's like he's not having good year he's not getting the averages that he's supposed to be getting but of course Antoine Littleton's gone now so I'm looking at Roman Hemby and I'm saying he should get like the majority of the carries I want to say like 80 percent of them maybe that's a little bit high maybe 70 but Colby McDonald also had a really good statistical year last year in terms of the amount of yards he got and the average yards per carry. He had a, a top notch type of year for Roman Hemby and a type of year where it's like, I was calling Colby McDonald should get more carries as well. But Antoine Littleton definitely took a lot of carries, but I'm saying that Roman Hemby should be the workhorse. This is a guy that I think people don't know. He was the number two back on Mel Kuyper's big board at a certain point in the season. That was way early on, and a lot of things changed after Roman Hemby kind of went on a downwards type of turn. Not downwards. It's not like the talent was there. Part of it was on the offensive line. Didn't run block as well, but part of it was just maybe it was on Roman Hemby, so I'm not finding the holes. But part of it was the play calling, just not giving enough carries. And I want our best player to get as many carries as he possibly can, one of our best players on offense. Talia's gone this year. So throwing the ball 50 times a game and leading the Big Ten in passing attempts, that might not work. And I think it's reasonable to think it won't work. We can't play that brand of football this year where we just chuck it all over the yard and just throw the ball a ton and it's like he'll keep us in it and the explosiveness of our wide receiver room, which I think is really explosive and really elite still, and one of the better groups in the Big Ten. I think Caden Prather is awesome at 6'4", and I think Ty Felton is a really good player. And then Octavian Smith has the potential to step up with his speed in the slot and do some really good things. I think there's a really good group up there. But at the same time, it's like it comes down to the quarterback play. I don't think our quarterback is going to be successful – the guy that's going to be either Billy Edwards or Billy Edwards or um, Cameron Edge, their first year starting, or MJ Morris, who is new in the system. I don't think any of them work like that, especially if Billy Edwards is starting. You can't do that. He's not that type of player. And if Billy Edwards is starting, Roman Hemby's stock should go up because he'll open up so much in the run game for Roman Hemby. It's similar to kind of what Lamar Jackson does. Obviously, Billy Edwards does know Lamar Jackson. I think he's a closer build to like a Josh Allen type of guy. But when you have a guy that can run every single time at the quarterback position and tuck it, then it's like it opens up it opens up the run game so much for a guy like Roman Hemby. And that could be interesting. But I don't know if that's good in, for us passing the ball. But I do think Roman Hemby will have a better year this year. I think it was emphasized this offseason. I'm sure Coach Locksley looked at it and was like, we got to give this guy more chances. We got to give him more opportunities, more screen plays. He had a really nice screen pass in the Music City Bowl game. Honestly, made Billy Edwards' stats look good after his really poor passing percentage. The reason the passing yards was kind of there was because – of the screen to Roman Hemby. You can get him involved in the passing game. He had an interesting quote that said he compared his game to Alvin Kamara, and I think it's kind of like that in a lot of spots because he can receive, he can run the ball, he's a talented type of player that can, is versatile, and I like that from Roman Hemby. Draw up different plays for him because he might be our best player in our offense, and we're going to be a different football team this year. It's going to have to be more dependent on the run game, which scares me because I know that Maryland last year's identity was throwing the ball. And so I think we need Roman Hemby, and I think he will step up for Maryland football. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. 
Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.